Hey everybody, it's Hari Swaminathan from OptionTiger.com. Today is Tuesday. I'm in India, so you'll see that date is Tuesday, Feb 6th, 9.40 a.m. here. In the U.S., it is still uh, Monday, Feb 5th, around 11 p.m. or so, Eastern Time. Now, we've seen a pretty significant sell-off in the last uh, one week or so. And in fact, um, I think uh, right from this time, from the high onwards, the all of last week, there was uh, quite a bit of weakness. And then, of course, in the last couple of days, uh, from last Friday onwards, the market's just been tanking a lot. So now, as you can see, uh, this is a 50-day moving average, and this is a 200-day. So just in the last one week, it has pierced through the 50-day moving average, and it's just about to hit the 200 day, it may bounce off today again. The futures don't look very good. It's down about 56 points. Yesterday, of course, the S&P went down 113 points, which is a very, very significant day, obviously. And then the VIX went up by 20 points. So, and accompanying that was the highest volume we can see in, a, in one year. So, uh, obviously, markets are cracking and there's no real uh, specific reason except for people say that there's a... Uh, expectation of uh, rising interest rates, perhaps some inflation because of all the uh, tax reform and the tax cuts that are coming in. I don't, my personal opinion, of course, uh, is that I, I, I don't buy into that argument. There is something, of course, that is deeper that is cracking in the markets just because interest rates may rise or inflation may go up a little bit. Uh, it really shouldn't have this kind of an impact in the market. And of course, uh, you know, we all are left to speculate then what could be the reason for such a uh, such a crack. So, but before we get into that, what I want to do is just look at the numbers uh, as published by the Wall Street Journal and perhaps we can get uh, some kind of an idea as to what we are witnessing here. So, this is an article on uh, the Wall Street Journal and uh, this, you know, it says the stock market sell off by the numbers. And if you can see, here's a, just a sample of some numbers at Monday's low, this was the, the Dow Jones uh, was had fell uh, had dropped on an intraday basis by the most number of points ever, and then once again here also the largest one day point decline. Uh, the Dow dropped below two thousand uh, uh, milestones. All thirteen were down. That's no surprise. S and P was down. That's no surprise. The CBOE, the the VIX index uh, rose uh, by one hundred and seventeen percent. Its biggest one-day percentage rise ever. So you can imagine, even um, as far back as 2008 or 2011, the VIX did not climb up by so much. So all this, all of this, just says that there is some significant uh, deep cracks uh, in the market, and you're just left to wonder whether this whole um, uh, justification of interest, higher interest rates, and inflation can cause. Uh, such damage uh, to the market. I, I seriously doubt it. I think there's something else that uh, the big players are worried about. And I'm not sure what, I mean, it's not meant to be political, but perhaps they're worried that, uh, that the presidency may itself be in trouble because of all the investigations going on. I'm not sure what that is. That is speculation, of course, from my side. But just the argument that it's interest rates or inflation doesn't seem to uh, be able to explain this kind of a crack and you can see the futures are also down 61. So what I did was just look at some of the other uh, asset classes because this is when you really need to go back a year to, or maybe even three years and look at some other things and uh, you can see that bonds have been coming down uh, and, and that is and, and that is to be expected And but suddenly if you know when you see the bonds up you know rising so when bonds rise that means interest rates uh, will fall but all through Bonds have been falling, which so that tells you there was already an expectation of interest rates uh, going up. In fact, interest rates were going up. That's why the bonds are coming down. So this new surprise uh, about interest rates really doesn't make a lot of sense because it's already been being priced into the market for at least uh, you know the last uh, two or three months. You can see that it's and in fact it's been coming down from even from uh, you know this level. So even for the past uh, six months there's been some sort of an expectation of rising interest rates. And so this is not making a lot of sense. And now suddenly the bonds are starting to go up. So now you can see that now if this may be acting as a safe haven now, especially if interest rates are going up, then money might pour into the U.S. bond market because of the uh, or because of uh, because investors will get uh, higher interest rates. And so it's starting to move up. 
However, this once again does not um, go very well with the rising interest rate expectation if bonds are going up. So that's one thing that you notice. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is the dollar index, which is the dollar DXY. And the dollar index has been, the dollar has been coming down for quite a bit. Now suddenly it's starting to go up, uh, just like the bonds. And that would be expected if money is expected to come into the bond markets. Now, why would it come into the bond markets? One is expectation of higher interest. And two, perhaps there is a safe haven element coming into the bond markets. And if that's the case, then US dollar will go up. Let's look at uh, gold as well. So gold futures slash GC. And you should see that gold would be moving up. It will move exactly out, you know, as a, as a, against the US dollar. So if the US dollar is coming down, then gold will go up. Now you can see there's a little bit of choppiness here. But regardless, this is a chart from bottom left to the top right on gold. So all of these are saying that there is something bigger going on. Uh, the Just the interest rates and inflation doesn't seem to really cut it. And uh, now we can see the futures, uh, the Japanese market have, has opened already and uh, now the uh, European markets will open. So, but you can see the futures are down about 68. In fact, it just went down another 10 points. And um, so there is definitely something in the markets and we just have to watch. And if you're playing the options market, you have to be very, very careful because now if you can look at the SPX options, let's go to SPX and what I want to do is uh, go into the analyze. And if you look at the options, even the two day options, uh, which expires this uh, Wednesday, the plus or minus is 125. And you can also see that the bid ask spread is just, uh, you know, incredible $62 and $72 for an at the money option. And so this is not the time to be playing uh, the SPX. If you do want to play, uh, you know, it has to be a spread, a $5 spread and, uh, you know, things like that. But uh, if you're going to sell because the premiums are so high, uh, the selling premium might look like a very attractive, uh, attractive uh, proposition. And it could be, but you have to make sure that you do it as a spread and you have to, and I would do it on the call side because uh, if uh, the markets go up, then the volatility will come down. And so the Vega effect will be adding to your options position. So that's something that uh, you can do. That's probably the only safe trade but in in markets like this it's best to just stay out and just let some clarity come in and uh, see how uh, things go on from here thanks